Okay, so uh, for this video, I'm going to talk about the effect of hysteretic shape on the maximum displacement of single degree freedom uh, system. Actually, the, uh, this um, title is important for those who are working on um, the response of single degree freedom system and wants and or want uh, to know the effect of hysteretic shape on the maximum displacement response of it. So if we have a single degree of freedom system, for example, and we want to know what are the responses of this single degree of freedom system if we are having different hysteretic model, different hysteretic model. And I'm going to talk about what is the definition of hysteretic model and what are the types of it. So uh, in, uh, in this series of uh, videos, I'm going to talk about the effect of pinched hysteretic shape. I'm going to talk about them. I'm going to define or I'm going to give some hints about, about it. And the stiffness degradation uh, hysteretic model and strength deterioration on the maximum displacement response according to FEMA 35. Six. Actually, what um, I'm bringing this from um, from FEMA 440, and it was giving some hints about the FEMA 356 um, uh, related to the coefficient method. So we are going to talk about something related to the C2, which is a coefficient that is um, uh, giving the effect or providing the effect of the hysteretic model on the response or the maximum displacement response of a single degree of freedom system. So mainly I'm bringing this from FEMA 440. It is the improvement of nonlinear static seismic analysis procedures. Okay, uh, it was released 2005 and I'm going to focus in on these two sections which are 3.2.1 and 3.4.3. Okay, first of all, before indulging into this part, we need to think about the what are the different hysteretic behaviors that we have in general. What are the different hysteretic behavior? And I'm going to talk about it from, uh, from section 3.2.1 from FEMA 440. Okay, so we have here, uh, like mainly, we have four different hysteretic behaviors. Um, that were used in the study that I have mentioned too in FEMA 440. Uh, they are, the study actually simply, in a very simple um, way I can explain it like they are bringing some earthquakes with different intensities and they are putting the single degree freedom system uh, with different hysteretic model under these earthquakes and we will see what is the effect of the hysteretic model on the response of the single degree freedom system, like the maximum response here. Okay, so we have a bunch of earthquakes and we have like four different types, for example, of uh, hysteretic models. And we are going to say, or we are going to um, like provide some information or insights regarding how much effect is going to be there if we use different hysteretic models. Commonly, we use one reference. Uh, hysteretic model, which is going to be the first one, which is, uh, we call it the elastoplastic, perfectly plastic model. Actually here, <clears throat> in um, uh, the four different types that we have, quickly I'm going into the, to understand the shape here, or the, how the behavior is telling us uh, the, uh, the energy dissipation pattern of each, of each uh, model. Um, here we have something called elastoplastic, perfectly plastic model, which is uh, like, as you can see here, it is almost rectangular shape. So we are like starting here with the loading part, as if that we are <coughs> pushing the single degree of freedom system okay, to this point, for example, until it reaches to the point of yield, for example, and then the system is going to anchor some displacement okay this is displacement the horizontal line here is going to be the displacement uh, axis and the vertical line is the force 
So we are like bringing the relation or we are putting and plotting the relation between the displacement here, let's assume this is the displacement, and the lateral force that is going to be applied on the single degree freedom system, which is going to be the base shear, for example, let's assume it is the force here, which is going to be the same here also, okay? So we have a relation between F and delta, the force and the displacement, and this is the zero here. So this is going to give us the relation, the history of the loading. So we are loading here, and then we are unloading here. This means that we are unloading. We are bringing back the, uh, the mass to its original position, or for example, at zero here, this is zero. And then we are going to increase in the opposite direction, and then we are making the system to go back and forth between maximum positive and maximum negative. Anyway, this is a very common and uh, well-known and famous hysteretic model. We call it elastoperfectly plastic model. And in the study whether in FEMA 440, it is being used as the reference for us. So we are going to use it as a reference. We are going to compare other models, other hysteretic models, with this EPP, which means elastoplastic, perfectly plastic model. Okay, the second one is the stiffness degrading model, the stiffness degrading model. Let's go to the next slide to see it bigger here. Yes, that's that's better. So we have the same here. We call it stiffness degrading model, which is making relation, as we said, between force and displacement. And for SD or stiffness degrading model, as you can see here, whenever we start or whenever we are looking to the this slope here, as you can see, it is, we call it the stiffness, right? This is the stiffness, the slope of the loading part or unloading part. This is what we call it the stiffness of the loading path at this particular stage. So here, if we are going to look with different cycles, we have like different cycles, like this is first cycle, and then we have the second cycle, and then we have the third cycle, right? So each cycle, this is like one, two, three, for example. As you can see here, in the first cycle, the slope was like something like this. In the second one, it was like this. Third one is what it was like this. So this is one, two, and three, right? So the slope at, of each one here, of, of each loading path is, as you can see, it is decreasing. So we call this degrading, stiffness degrading stiffness degrading okay and i'm going to talk about it also in detail okay and i'm going to say what is the meaning of stiffness degrading means that the lateral stiffness of the system or the single degree freedom system the more displacement it is going to uh, the mass going to be displaced the stiffness of the system is going to decrease the stiffness of the system is going to decrease okay and as you can see here this system, let's clean. This system, if we are going to look to it, you're going to find that this part is going to give us the energy that is going to be dissipated with the system, right? If we compare it with the Elasto APP system, almost we are having like something like a rectangle here or um, like a square, something like this. The area here which is giving us the energy dissipated is higher than this case okay okay and then the next one the next type we call it stiffness or strength and stiffness degrading system we call it ssd okay as you can see here we are degrading in terms of everything look here the stiffness is degrading with each with each uh, cycle and at the same time, the strength is degrading, okay, with each cycle. As we said, the slope of, of the line, it is the stiffness. However, that the point where that it reaches the maximum in terms of the force, the vertical line, this is what we call it strength, okay? So the strength is decreasing and also the stiffness is decreasing. We call it strength and stiffness degrading, or SSD for short. And the last one is the nonlinear elastic system.
NE, nonlinear elastic system, you are going to find that in this system the loading is going to be on this path and the unloading also will be on the same path. It is going back here. This means that there is no energy dissipation at all. Okay, so here for example in SSD model, this is the energy dissipation, this part, this area, okay, which is less than SD. However, SSD still it is larger than NE. Actually, there is no energy dissipation here. We call it nonlinear elastic. Nonlinear because the load path is nonlinear. It is like bilinear, for example, here. And it is elastic because the load path follows the same path for the unloading path, or the unloading path is the same for the loading path. This is why we call it elastic. Okay? So nonlinearity comes from the path of the uh, two parts of the curve and the elasticity or the elastic title comes from that the loading and unloading are following the same path so it is uh, called elastic part okay i'm going to talk in the next videos about uh, like each one of them and what is the suitable application for each one of them okay thank you and see you in the next video